It's not my birthday. March 2nd, 1904, was the day Ted Seuss Geisel, the man we now know as Dr. Seuss, was born. When he was in high school, he loved to write and draw. After graduation, he attended Dartmouth College and was the editor of the school's humor magazine, Drawing Cartoons. After earning a degree at Dartmouth in 1925, Geisel went to England to study more. Like all college students, he sat in class and took notes, writing down the important things that his teachers had to share. He also filled up his notes with doodles, funny pictures, and self-portraits too. He was planning on becoming a college teacher, a professor of literature. Let's listen to what Dr. Seuss has to say about these plans. I started out to be a professor of English, and I decided that I'd rather write, and I put silly little doodles along with the words, and that's how it happened. Back home in the United States, his drawings, what he called silly little doodles, got him a job at Judge, the nation's leading humor magazine, drawing for the front cover and creating cartoons for each issue. One of his earliest cartoons was about a king that tried to get rid of a dragon with a popular insect spray called Flit. The company that made Flit, Standard Oil of New Jersey, saw the cartoon and hired Geisel to make advertisements for their product. The Flit ads were so popular they hired him to create ads for another one of their products, Esolube Oil for Cars. His first ad featured this creature. If your car was using oil, perhaps it was because the Oleogobulus was drinking it. Geisel's ads were popular, sold a lot of stuff. He made another ad for Esolube. Was your car making a lot of noise? Perhaps another creature, the Moto Raspus, was scratching it. Does Moto Raspus look familiar? Have you seen this face before? Hold on to your answer. We will talk about this more later. He created ads for Standard Oil for many years. They were very successful, but Geisel was starting to get bored. His contract with Standard Oil, however, said that he could only write and draw for them. But let's let him tell the story. I had a lawyer go over my contract with the oil company, and they discovered that the one thing that wasn't excluded was children's books. And I began writing children's books. In 1937, he took a steamship to Europe and the rhythm of the boat's engine, kerplunk, 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 inspired him to write a poem, which became his first book. And to think I saw it on Mulberry Street. He sent it out to 27 publishers and each one turned him down. Finally, a friend helped him get Vanguard Press to release the book. Ted Geisel did not plan on being an author of children's books. He wanted to write other things. So why did he publish his children's books? And why did he use another name? Let's let him explain. My middle name is Seuss, and at the time that I picked the name Dr. Seuss was a disguise. He wrote three more children's books under the name Dr. Seuss before World War II. When the conflict started, he drew political cartoons, opposing Hitler in Germany and Mussolini in Italy. He drew cartoons that made fun of people that were against America joining the war. In 1942, Geisel started writing directly supporting the U.S. war effort. He worked for the War Production Board, writing for movies, creating pamphlets for soldiers such as this one about malaria, and drawing cartoons and posters about how Americans could help the war effort by doing things like carpooling and saving gas. After the war, he started writing children's books again, starting with McElligott's Pool. It's about a boy that goes fishing, even though everyone in town says there are no fish in the pond. The boy doesn't listen and imagines all the wonderful things that might live down below. The book is dedicated to his father, T.R. Gissel. Dr. Seuss's father, T.R., had once run a zoo. Maybe that's why one of Dr. Seuss's next books was If I Ran the Zoo, about Gerald McGrew, a kid who visits the zoo and decides that the animals are not interesting enough. He says that if he ran the zoo, he would free them all and find new, more bizarre and exotic animals. The most famous Seuss character is the cat in the hat. It has been published in many languages and even Braille. It is enjoyed all over the world. 
ever wonder why his most famous character is a kitty? Dr. Seuss is a big cat fan and has drawn and painted them all of his life. And yes, when we saw the Esolube advertisement featuring Mortar Raspus, we were looking at the beginnings of the cat in the hat. But this character was fully developed long before anyone saw it. Few people have seen drawings of Ormy, a cat Ted created for some TV commercials. They were never produced or seen on television. Ted used to draw elephants in those early ads and cartoons. They were the start of a later book character, Horton the Elephant. Dr. Seuss always cared about others. That is what the Horton books are all about. The book Horton and the Who was created as a symbol for how Dr. Seuss felt about post-war American occupation in Japan. Many of Geisel's books express his views on social and political issues. How the Grinch Stole Christmas is about anti-materialism. We don't need all the gifts to be happy during the holidays. The Sneetches is about racial equity. Yertle the Turtle is about anti-fascism and anti-authoritarianism. And the Lorax is about environmentalism and anti-consumerism. Like many great authors, he used his feelings about important issues to create stories that people would enjoy. He worked hard to make sure his stories and drawings were always as good as they could be. He didn't consider himself an artist, but let's let him explain. I really sweat my things out, not knowing how to draw, actually. The drawing is sometimes painful to me, but I will work a drawing over and over until I can get it, not to perfection, but to as good as I am able to do. He also cared about the words. For a little 60-page book, I'll keep it on the boards of my wall for a year, and I will see little things that could be improved. Dr. Seuss has written 44 children's books, all popular with kids all around the world. So how did a man that wanted to be a college English professor get so good at writing children's books? Horton the Elephant knows and perhaps speaks for Dr. Seuss when he says, a person's a person, no matter how small.